he's a rider that you don't want to be sat just doing nothing, especially with this group there coming into the finish. Small group, Geraint, where is he riding through now? He's back on the radio once again. But they don't look committed, do they? They don't look full gas. I think that group behind will catch back on. Let's not forget a headwind section as well. So if the group him cooperating behind, and there were, there's a couple of teammates in that group behind that are not going to pull through as well. Voss is in that second group, so he may not ride with G in the front there. That's the first turn G's done, albeit a small one. Oh, Juan Balde has not won a race since he won the general classification here two years ago. And he was the man that lit things up on the climb, first rider across the top. Now they're coming back here. This looks like O'Connor. O'Connor's returning. Foss is coming with him as well. There's another rider from Lidl Trek. And that looks like it may well be Wild Pools at the back, I think. Yeah, definitely Wild Pools at the back. A man who we know how quick is out of a group like this. A lot of riders with teammates in there. It's a very, very small group and a large gap back to this. Is there going to be a group coming through? We're going to have at least 10, if not 11 riders at the front now. Contact. And well, it looks as though O'Connor has a teammate as well there. He's helped him get back on and this time it is uh, Barre Bantre again. The shorts from Decathlon there. are cracking me. I've got it's two different one, logos almost. on the back. <laughs> Sorry, Rob. The old shorts is... and the new shorts, maybe. Ah, yes. Well, one's a skin suit, I think, isn't it? And one's shorts and, and jersey. Yeah. Tricky situation now. Not everyone in this group maybe wants to ride, does want to ride, so there might be attacks come from this group. Nine Ks. And again, the numbers are going to be interesting there. Way up, Rob. I didn't expect this one. Now the next group, here they go. They're not too far behind here, Adam. We're talking four, three, four hundred metres. No Ghana in this group either. Well, that means Ineos Grenadiers have to make a decision then, and surely they have to ride now, don't they? With a group that big in there, yeah, they, I mean, ride to keep the tempo up, but there's also a lot of riders that will probably be up there on GC. You can just see at the front, just two riders, Chavez and Tiberi, by the looks of things, just that little gap. The tactical game will start with these guys. No one will want to commit, but I think with them all there, generally all GC riders, that they'll all should just work together to try and neutralise those attacks, really. Yeah, but as I said before, there's a chance for a stage win here as we see Stora on the front. Buefe group have missed out. You've got riders there involved from Kern Farmer, from El Scaltel. Representing Movistar, oh, that's Sergio Samitier. He's got two teammates in here. group behind as well but 12 seconds eight k's to go it's going to take a lot of firepower from that group and if you're able to get across there if you've got anything left there's not many riders in that second group that don't have a teammate in that first group either so there's only a select few that will have to do the riding movistar tudor pro cycle we've already seen kern farmer as you mentioned Bora. There's no Bora rider in that front group either, is there? And the rider they have in here. Trying to double check on who that is. It looks like Iquita was in the peloton now, then. Here we go. Jompe Lopez, not the most popular. Well, I get it. Uh, you know, I get it. Two riders in the front. Garner is a long way back, he's not in that second group. I'd be getting frustrated as well. There's no rule why you have to ride, but it's understandable why you get frustrated, and it's understandable why Geraint and Tobias Voss wouldn't ride, just with the case is still 7Ks to go, and there might be a group just behind that larger group, and if Garner is in there, that creates their chances. Putting Xavier's in here. This is O'Connor. 12, 13 seconds now. They're gaining, despite the fact that not everybody seems to be fully committed. I mean, with Paul's in this group, we know how good he is at sprinting, we know how quick he is his turn of speed. We've seen the Vuelta Espana this year that he caught everyone off guard. I think it was one of the first stages where he just shot off on the front. Everybody rolling through here. I think they might be. 
14 seconds in growing. Let's see. It's the most organised they've been so far, let's say. Yeah. Six Ks to go. They've got another two Ks until they enter that tailwind section. So into a headwind of around 10 Ks an hour. Behind their riding, aren't they? Whoever yep. is there is committed as well. They're giving everything 15 seconds. It certainly looks as though they might be gaining a little bit here in this group. Fascinating tussle. It's a tug of war here. Yeah, it's going to be a close one coming into the finish line. I think there's still, like we said earlier, within that front group, not everyone is committed to really. Geraint Thomas is still on the radio. I think not everyone is 100% committed here. Different ambitions, different goals. And other riders are seeing this as a chance stage victory. They really want to go flat out for it, which, for all we know, Geraint Thomas might be thinking too. And, you know, he's just trying to sit on the wheel, save his energy and go for that sprint. It's been almost two years since he took a victory. We know how good he was at the Giro last year, second place. Of course, that was consistently good every single day, wasn't it? His last victory came at the Tour de Suisse 2022, again, when he was in fine form just ahead of a brilliant podium finish at the Tour de France. Is today going to be the day? Baldé, remember, it's been almost two years for him. O'Connor, he's not stopped winning this year. Harbour's been good, and it'd be a rare bit of success if he could take something. Gebrek Xavier, such a loyal teammate, looking for that first European win. There's lots of nice stories here. And Foss, of course, in here, at his brand new team after transferring over. Let's have a look at this group now. As you said, there is no Certainly no. Filippo Ganna. There is for Bora a Sergio Aguita, and we know he's quick to the line. Yeah, very quick. He's having to do a lot of work, though, to bring it back. You can see him second wheel just coming over the top. In that group is Hugh Carthy as well. Three riders from Movistar, including Sergio Samitier, who we've seen. 15 seconds, it says. Still four and a half kilometers to go. Any hesitation and it's over. They've really got to keep on both sets of groups here. It's a fantastic battle we're watching. Is yeah, Geraint Thomas have lost rolling through now. Just done a little turn on the front, keep things going, stop people getting angry. Let's not forget two Bahrain riders, two little trek riders in there. Chavez just missing his turn at the back. Just over four kilometers to go and in the front group everybody playing the game aren't they they're just trying to say what they can but keep as much harmony as possible 11 riders looking to take stage one of the tour of the alps and we are four k's from the finish 14 seconds still a chance for this group behind adam yeah small i think this group's got bigger by the looks of things Geraint Thomas now rolling through with Voss, so maybe they're going for Voss today. Voss forcing Chavez to come through there. Tiberi just coming through onto his teammates' wheel over the top of him. If, ideally, if he can keep things away for Wild Pals, we think. Out of this group, Rob, you'd say he's probably the, the sharpest, the sharpest sprinter out of it, but there's still room for attacks here. There's still room for gaps to be opened up within this group with all of the GC riders really looking at each other. Is Voss laying off the back there? Yes, Foss, who's never won a road race outside the national championships, on, and Chris Harper's making his move. O'Connor chases. Juanpe Lopez pulls out and just wonders if he can let the wheel go, maybe, and see his teammate get a gap. That's a good break, Zabier. Closing the gap here is what pulls for Bahrain victorious. He has Tiberi, his teammate, on his wheel. Valdez still in this group towards the back. This is Chavez wearing 45. And Tobias Fossi, we talked about, still with that number three on his back. We're being told 14 seconds, another kilometre ticks by. But the games have started here, and if they keep rolling through, Adam, they'll get closer and look at the time gap. It's only a second, but it's coming back. Now we get hesitation. Big moment coming up. Yeah, watch Voss on the left-hand side. Is there going to be any room for him? Only just. This is... Oh, wasn't worth it. This is what's going to happen now, though, Rob. You see 15 seconds. It's gone back out just that two seconds extra with that acceleration. But just look at the riders off the front. Nobody wants to take it on. As I said, there's enough teammates in here. Geraint just having to respond to that. 
with the role of the teammates in here as well, if they've got one rider in the front, they can say no, but then the GC battle starts with, oh, I don't want to let that go away. So for the, for the riders that are trying to help the teammates win, it's... Uh, it's a difficult one. GC stage win, GC stage win. They want to try and keep it all together if Look possible. Look who's back in here. Look who's back in this group. Filippo Ganna has returned to this group. You said it got better. You said it got bigger. Ganna is in the chasing group now. So no wonder they were starting to lay off at the back. There's only two kilometres to go, though. Less than that. The gap's growing bigger because they're accelerating up the front. They're also playing games as to who's doing the work behind because that group's got bigger. Tactical cards being played all over the time. And now this is a Manuel Gebrek Xavier, who's made a move at the front, and he's yeah. with Geraint, Geraint Thomas. Thomas. Yeah, G is saying, right, it's time to play now. This group's going to stay away, so let's give it a go. Let's not forget he's got Voss behind. Voss tried to counter a minute ago. The speed's high. Let's not forget they're in a tailwind, so they really have to keep that pace high if they want to catch anyone by surprise. They're everyone aware of it. Chavez on the right-hand side goes now. And Esteban Chavez goes, but he's been marked by Tobias Foss and by Ben O'Connor. Now Harper has to go, and this gap has got big very quickly indeed. Look behind. Is it going to stick? Is it going to go? Yes, they're carrying through. And now Juan P. Lopez decides he's got to get across. There's the hesitation. Some have missed it. This could be the winning move. Four away, Adam. This is a difficult one, though, for Geraint Voss being in there. He doesn't want O'Connor to go away too far. So that GC battle, stage win battle, what is Voss going to do now? Is he going to sit up and say, my team lead is behind? It's such a tough one to manage, putting guys in moves to keep things rolling, to neutralise attacks. There's such a fine line between it. But O'Connor in a very, very good position. Lopez on the way across to it. A reminder, there's 10, 6 and 4 bonus seconds for first, second and third in this race. 500 metres now. Tobias Voss yet to win a road race outside of his nationals. The former world time trial champion at his brand new team. Esteban Chavez is there for EF Education Easy Post, the former Colombian national champion. Now into the final few hundred metres and it's Chavez going through the centre. Voss on the left hand side, Harper on the right. It could be his big day. O'Connor starting to struggle though. But look at Harper. Is it going to be the moment finally for Chris Harper? It's not. It's for Foss, it's Tobias Foss, who makes a winning start to his Ineos Grenadiers career. This time yesterday, struggling. It's two wins in two days, and the season has been kick-started for them. Tobias Foss is a winner, down from altitude, into racing. He takes the opening stage of the Tour of the Alps and the leader's jersey. Chapeau to Ineos Grenadiers, and here's another man taking the sprint as we expected behind. Filippo Ganna then coming through to take the sprint from this group. Ganna will come through. Manu Kelly, I think, is there as well, not too far away. And this is the group that he's going to have to try and chase time because there's some time gaps open up here, there and everywhere in this race. Foss has done it. Congratulated by Harper. Of course, Harper himself, a former Jumbo Visma rider, let's not forget. And there's Juan P. Lopez who went on the attack with them as well. And I think just clearing up that misunderstanding where in the heat of battle they're having a right all go at each other. They were, yeah, but I think with they were unsure how far Ghana was behind, you know, the both Ineos Grenadiers riders were waiting until they got the all clear and and that was it, it was game on. We saw Geraint Thomas go on the attack, we saw Voss obviously go on the attack once. But yeah, played played beautifully by the Ineos Grenadiers. That's a hard attack with Geraint Thomas in the last kilometre, countered by Chavez, followed by Voss, and then Voss starting that sprint, which I thought was way too early, 400 metres to go, but, yeah, managed to get the win, and as you said, Rob, two wins in two days. Tom Pickcock at the Amstel Gold Race, Tobias Foss today, and this is a big moment for, for Tobias Foss, because we know how good he is in the time trial. He's a strong GC rider. One, it's a great start to his career at his new team, Two, it's the first time in an international peloton he's won a professional road race. He's going to put on the leader's jersey as well. No wonder he's all smiles, the Norwegian. Crazy, isn't it? A rider that was world time trial champion has only just won his first road race. Bonkers. Yeah, last year was a strange one, wasn't it, for him at, at Jumbo Visma, now Visma Lisa Bike. It was a nice moment then that he was sprinting against Chris Harper, a former teammate of his as well from the Dutch team. 
still looking for his own first big success as well. It was close for Harper. He's riding in the best form of his career. But Tobias Foss is now back in our thoughts at his new team and ahead of the Giro, winning at the Tour of the Alps. It's only day one, but my eyes, it started in explosive.